Hello, Shiny Lions, it's Pastor Chris, and I've got two quick things to talk about before we get to today's devotional from Hebrews chapter 4. The first one is uh, I want to share more about how we are getting back to in-person services. On our website, we have all the graphics for what we're calling our first stage, that is the return to, to in-person services. We have the return, we have the transition, and we have the new normal. And uh, please understand, there are going to be some things that are changed forever because of our experiences here. There are going to be some things that we're probably not going to go back to. Um, now, we're not ready to make those announcements right now. They're probably not going to be announcements you care about. They're going to be things like going to contactless check-in for our kids. Uh, we're already looking into that technology. So, um, for this first stage, here are two things I want to talk about. The first one is, this is not the right stage for everybody to return to church. If you are part of, the, part of the vulnerable population, I have been saying from the very beginning, I love you, I can't wait to see you, this might not be the right time. Now, a message you have never heard from Shawnee Lions Church, and in my, uh, between uh, part-time and full-time, my 16 years of ministry now, something I never once imagined I would ever say out loud is that we're really not <laughs> ready for certain people to come to church. That's just not the message that Shawnee Lions Church is known for. That's not who we are. In this time, however, we're going to acknowledge that the right decision for attending church, which of course the church is the people, but the right choice for attending corporate worship may be digital. I am so thankful that we have these technologies so that for those in the vulnerable population or those who aren't the vulnerable population, but they're caring for those in the vulnerable population, maybe professionally, maybe as a, as a, as a nurse or as a medical doctor, uh, perhaps they're caring for a family member just out of love. Uh, this might not be the right time to return for you. I bless that decision. And of course, there's no condemnation. Uh, and, and please understand that there is a substantial portion of our congregation uh, that we are not doing those things. And therefore, it is time for us to return to in-person worship. Uh, you are not lesser if you stay home and watch online. You are not less than. Uh, you are still part of our church family. And we can't wait for things to progress so that you can be back in person as well. Uh, so that's what it is. That's... And I've shared this, that I even have members of my own family that they do not go to public worship services during certain seasons because for their personal health, it would be too dangerous at certain times of the year. So I just want to acknowledge that. I'm going to cover facial coverings very quickly. We had some good questions about that. First of all, I'm not a medical doctor. Second of all, I'm not making a political statement. Here are the two things I'm going to say. The first one is that facial coverings are for the protection of others, not for you. If you feel like you need a respirator or a facial mask or a, uh, a facial covering to be protected at church, now is not the right time for you to return to in-person services. We will continue to minister. If you are not getting the kind of fulfillment you want out of our online services, please reach out to us. We'll figure out other ways to minister to you. But being in a public corporate worship setting right now, even with all the changes we've made to make it safer, it's still not the right time if you are under the impression that you will have this for your own health. If you are going to be struck with panic, if you walk into a place and everyone else is not abiding by uh, wearing a face mask or doing these other things, now is also not the right time for you to come back to public worship services. This is not a statement of condemnation. There are good reasons to want people to be intentionally limiting the spread of any of their own potential illnesses to others. This is not a political statement. And I will make this statement that choosing to inconvenience oneself is an inherently Christ-like act. That's what Jesus did when Jesus came to serve and not to be served. That's what Jesus did when he went to the cross, which was quite the inconvenience to be able to rescue us from our sin. Uh, if you choose to wear a facial covering, I bless that decision 100%. But I also understand that there are some concerns about people who are not used to using them correctly. And unfortunately, I've seen this, that they will make themselves more susceptible to illness. I also understand that not everyone is able to wear one and it's healthy for them as well. I'm just going to be really honest. If, if those kinds of coverings are an issue right now for your own personal health or for your own personal conscience, now is probably not the best time to return to corporate worship services because uh, even if we just have 50 people here on Sunday, there's going to be people who are either out of ignorance or uh, whatever it may be. They're not going to abide by every precaution that you believe they should be abiding by. Again, this is not a message that you're going to hear from Shine Light Church in the future, that this isn't the right time for you to go to a public worship service. But right now, I'm just being clear, we're not going to police it because we know that there are those who cannot wear it. We also know that for us to effectively communicate from the stage, we can't wear them when we're communicating like that. 
and we understand how that can seem very hypocritical to people. Now, what I will say is that I will be available for prayer. I will be wearing a facial covering while I'm praying for other people. I don't care if you're not worried about it. I'm doing this because I desire to show love to you and I desire to show love to those that I'll be around throughout the rest of the week as I minister to them. So again, this is not a political statement. This is not a, a medical statement. If you desire to wear a facial covering to bless those around you, I bless that decision. If this is an incredibly concerning thing for you, now is not the right time for you to return to in-person worship services. On our website, we have stage one, which is the return. This is understandably not gonna work for everybody right now. The second stage is what we're calling the transition. And that's where, yes, we have the majority of a congregation returning to in-person worship service, and we are transitioning to what will become phase three, our new normal. There are some things we're gonna be doing differently for the long haul. One of those things is we're probably gonna try to go to a contactless method for checking in our kids. Now, I understand that that might be a little bit overkill in certain seasons, that being said, you know, before all this started, there was a nasty, nasty bit of illness that was running its way through our community. So again, just to say, we're looking at some new normals. Right now it's the return. It's not gonna be the right phase for everyone. Phase two is the transition. That will be the right phase for most people, but still maybe not everyone. And then the new normal will have some adjusted procedures, but our social distancing requirements and these kinds of things will be limited or non-existent. And that's gonna be when you're gonna to have to really make the personal choice of, this is the new normal, is this part of, is this, this gonna be part of what I do? Um, we will not be keeping the chairs seven feet apart uh, indefinitely, but for this season, these are the things we're doing. All right, it's been almost seven minutes. I know there's more to talk about. Thank you for, for hearing me because we're communicating again and again and again and again in the hopes that people will have clarity about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Now for Hebrews chapter four. So uh, the book of Hebrews is interesting. Of course, it's written to those of the Hebraic faith who are uh, beginning to come alive in their faith in Christ. Now they're not quite there yet because actually in, I think it's the fifth chapter, maybe the fourth, uh, the writer actually says, you know, you should be teaching these truths, but instead I have to instruct you on the elemental truths of the faith. Uh, so they're not doing the best in their faith development, but they're getting some things right. And they're also trying to reconcile what it is to be a, a good Hebrew and to follow Christ. Now, we do not at Shawnee Lions Church say, okay, the Old Testament doesn't count. We're just going to ignore it. But we do have to acknowledge that when Jesus fulfilled the law, that there are going to be some differences, and we just walked through a bunch of the books that Paul wrote, uh, and for example, the, the conformity to the act of circumcision. That was something Paul said that has no place for a new believer. Uh, so, what we're looking at today is uh, verse 9 in Hebrews chapter 4, and this is all about rest, and, and here's what we're going to focus on. Uh, verse 9, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. The example of disobedience he's referring to is to the Israelites when they were in the 40 days of the desert. And uh, of course, they received many commandments. One of them was to, uh, to honor the Sabbath. Now, it's interesting because, again, uh, the Ten Commandments, we would not say that this is part of what Jesus fulfilled in uh, on the cross, that he fulfilled in, in being the Messiah. I think we, what we, we would say is that many of the Levitical laws were things that he brought to fulfillment. This is why Paul talks about uh, meat sacrifice to idols. It's why he talks about circumcision in an uncomfortable amount. So we're talking about these things, but what I want to focus on today is our view of rest. And let me acknowledge something. There are kind of two groups of people uh, that have kind of, anytime someone says there's only two, they're wrong. But for the sake of this devotional, there are kind of two groups of people that have emerged from the last two months. You've got a group of people that have just loved the time to stay at home, to enjoy time with their family, and what a blessing uh, in, in, in a way that has been. I mean, there's lots of terrible things in the world to grab the parts that are a blessing and to hold on to them, there's nothing evil or wrong or inconsiderate about that. In, in fact, I, I, I've seen so many tribute posts, uh, especially from uh, some folks who uh, perhaps one, the spouse stays at home and now the other spouse was home and it was just nonstop family time for weeks, which I know for some of us sounds uh, tough because there's <laughs> all kinds of fun family dynamics, but uh, the idea that that can just be such a blessing, that, that's wonderful. 
that's kind of one of these groups that they've really been able to embrace this and and to find really good things about it. And then there's been the other group, and I would actually put myself on this other group right now, where uh, we've just been incredibly busy. We've we haven't had those breaks, um, you know. Although by the Ohio uh, orders, by the mandates, uh, churches were actually listed as essential, which thank you, Governor DeWine, I, I, I fancy that. But medical workers, logistics folks, uh, the, the, the essential parts of the businesses that still had to report every day, in many ways were busier than ever. They were working more hours, they were working under more difficult conditions. Um, so I understand that for some people it's, well, I feel like I've just experienced rest in a new and wonderful way. That's awesome. For some people I know, the idea of experiencing rest in the next month is insane. But here's what I want to focus on. The focus of rest that the author of Hebrews is talking about isn't running away from our labor. Instead, it is resting in God. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God for anyone who enters God's rest. In other words, that God provides this rest and we enter into it with him. That he is on a permanent seventh day. <laughs> that his, his labor, so to speak, has been completed. And now, yes, he still interacts. Yes, there's still relationships. We don't just hide in a bubble when we Sabbath rest. But we enter into his rest and it's something that's transformative. He says, yes, we also rest from our works. But really, it's about entering into the rest that God has provided. So here's what I'm going to say. First of all, if you've experienced two weeks of rest, but God wasn't a part of it, you rested wrong. That you may have rested from your labors, and I'm glad that that has created a temporary benefit to your emotional, psychological health, whatever it may be, but it will not create the long-lasting effect that spending intentional time in God's rest will create for you, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, even physically, that we are in God's rest and he is transforming us in that time. Uh, However, if you are someone, and I know, first of all, I appreciate you if you're someone who fits this category, um, who the idea of rest is so foreign right now. Okay, I understand. But here's my question. If right now, the idea of taking a full day to enter into God's rest would get you fired, can you enter into God's rest on the drive home? Can you enter into God's rest in the 30 minutes between your evening shower, and you go to bed. Because when we run into God's rest, when we run into the center of God's presence, and that's where we recuperate from, not from trying to run away from our labor, but instead to enter God's rest, we will rest from our labors. That's when all the stress melts down and we're simply in the presence of God. So if you've been experiencing rest in that way for two weeks or two months, whatever it's been, time means nothing during Corona. Uh, Wonderful. If you're someone who has rested from their labors but hasn't rested in God, I challenge you, take whatever time you have left and make that a habit in your life. And if you're someone that would literally get fired if you tried to walk away from your labor right now, then walk into God's rest. Because here's the thing, if you're faithful with half an hour or an hour or, or a, wonderfully a day, sunrise to sunset, God will bless that. God will bless the work of your hands. He will bless your rest. He will bless you. Now, we'll talk about getting into healthy habits later. Obviously, there are times when there's a donkey in a well and we got to go get that taken care of. But uh, that's a biblical reference. I didn't just make that up. We, uh, right now, we can simply say we will find our rest by finding God's rest. And that will be what will lose us. Shine Alliance Church, we love you. Go to our website, shinealliance.com. Click on the COVID-19 updates. We have everything we've talked about in a, a visual form. Again, reach out, ask questions. We cannot wait to see those who are ready to return this Sunday. And it's not going to be forever. We're going to be back as a full church body. And I can't wait to celebrate that moment with you. Have a blessed day.